Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek. <coughs> well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, just because some people may well say that the contents of this omnibus bill, C-38, are admirable, does not make the use of it any more less offensive. Bill C-38 clearly is being used to slide controversial amendments to a number of pieces of non-budgetary legislation past Parliament. Equally, if not more important, Mr. Speaker, it was done to slide them past the Canadian public with ad without adequate scrutiny or due diligence being allowed. Let's be clear. The Conservatives are doing this so as to minimize the political damage to their government. Mr. Speaker, just consider for a moment a few items contained in Bill C-38, which on their own would have been problematic for this Conservative government. Just one issue, the raising of the age of eligibility for the old age security from 65 to 67. Had this change been given the airing it deserves, it clearly would have been become a larger flashpoint with most Canadians than it already had done so while neatly tucked inside of Bill C-38. Actually, on that point, in my time in Parliament, I have never seen such blundering and mishandling of a trial balloon as happened with the changes to OAS eligibility. It began in Davos when the PMO media notes contained a reference to a potential change to OAS. Then, when the opposition questioned the minister daily for a full week, finally the minister from HRDC gave indications there was some need for something to happen to OAS. And finally, later, after 10 days, Finance Minister finally spoke, saying something was likely to happen, but not before 2025. Of course, during the time lag, before anybody from government had the decency to respond, there was a firestorm from seniors that somehow their incomes would be cut. Then, of course, seniors got mad as they learned their kids now would have to work two additional years. Mr. Speaker, I would remind the government members that OAS is not a pension. OAS is a retirement security payment to protect seniors from literally starving. One has to ask what would have become of these changes had they been given the standalone consideration of a single bill before the HRDC committee. Equally as concerning to thousands of Canadians are the changes within Bill C-38 that move to make it harder for senior, seasonal workers to claim EI on a repeating basis as their seasonal type of work demands. Now, I personally believe that the Conservatives limiting the length of time environmental reviews of major construction projects can be drawn out may well be considered wise in Conservative circles. But now I ask you, truthfully, does anybody here truly believe that one-third of C-38 that deals with the environment shouldn't properly be in a bill or bills of its own. Having said this, I also believe Conservatives have significantly underestimated Canadians' commitment to the environment. Surely no one in this House of Commons believes Canadians can be fooled simply by, because major environmental changes are tucked inside of an omnibus budget bill. The very existence of Bill C-38 suggests that Conservatives believe Canadians are so dumb as to not realize this has all become solely, is being done solely to minimize public awareness and avoid criticism. Mr. Speaker, this Herculean effort, this act of misjudgment, will certainly come back to haunt each and every Conservative who votes for Bill C-38. Just as the Conservatives drove the agenda on the gun registry for 20 years, using it over and over to raise millions of dollars, Bill C-38 has now handled handed their opposition the very same type of issue going forward to 2015's election. I would have to say, in a solely political sense, the Conservatives' use of Bill C-38 in such a comprehensive manner is an especially terrible use of an omnibus lawmaking bill. C-38 contains in excess of 750 clauses, amends nearly 70 laws. One area alone affected by Bill C-38 that I believe has yet to strike home to Canadians is the changes in the oversight 
that the Canadian Security Intelligence Service ceases. Bill C-38 removes the Office of Inspector General of CSIS and passes the responsibility of that office to the Security Intelligence Review Committee and the Minister. Canadians, at least ones my age, will remember 1984 when CSIS was formed. It was formed, Mr. Speaker, because of a so-called dirty trick squad of the RCMP had crossed the line and were ultimately disbanded. When CSIS was created, the position of Inspector General was created to avoid a similar failure at the organization as the one that had happened with the RCMP. In the shadowy world of counterintelligence and in the light of the shadow of 9-11's tragedy, oversight of CSIS is all the more essential. I guess it should not be surprising to anyone in this place that a government who wants to hide its massive changes to Canada's laws protecting the environment from Canadians in an omnibus bill just might want CSIS seekers to remain in that secretive world. What is amazing to watch, Mr. Speaker, is how so many good people across the way have allowed themselves to become party to the omnibus bill. How can they so easily set aside in their minds what is right and proper about the parliamentary system? How can they take partisanship to such a new low? Mr. Speaker, they do not have to agree or even remotely accept what the opposition parties think. But they have decided that their opinion is so solid, so right, that the changes contained in C-38 are so urgent that they must forego proper committee and expert scrutiny. The parliamentary system evolved for a single purpose, and that was to protect the rights of the Canadian people, rights first enshrined by the Magna Carta nearly a thousand years ago. The consolidation of power with the PMO is not a new thing here in this place. Pierre Trudeau used it. Mike Harris used it in Ontario. Does anybody recall Minister of Education Ontario John Snowblin in the mid-90s? He was the minister caught on camera saying they had to create a crisis in education in order to advance the right-wing agenda. Strange how those who evoked the great ideals of government accountability and transparency during the 2006 election are violating those very promises with Bill C-38. Parliamentary language rules, Mr. Speaker, prevent me from declaring them for what they've become. But I can tell you that Canadians are already doing just that. Of course, instead of humbly accepting that well-earned criticism and withdrawing C-38, we will shortly see them follow through with this passage, all the while hiding a gross abandonment of their parliamentary responsibilities to Canadians that they represent behind the bill's title jobs, growth, and prosperity. That title is one of the most offensive misuses of that particular language ever seen in this place. Mr. Speaker, if some changes to the environmental law proposed in C-38 may be warranted, the fact has not been established. Yes, it would be inconvenient for the government to deal with its proposed changes in public session with expert witnesses. Would that be because they cannot get experts to back their assertions? Or could it be because expert scientists already, are clear, already clearly do not support the Conservatives' views on global warming and the degradation of our children's environment is okay because it generates enough profit? When the official opposition puts the hard questions to this group of Conservatives, often we hear them bellow and roar a variety of responses that may in the short term relieve their stress but do little to relieve their responsibility for the travesty that they are taking part in here today. There is a mantra that we hear that big government is bad, that it spends too much, that low taxes is the only way. The same people will say how they are always paying their bills and that they're honest citizens. They may well be, but they are wrong about a couple of things. Canadians are willing to pay for the services that they receive. They simply want transparency and accountability for those costs. Does it sound familiar, Mr. Speaker? It sounds like 2006 again. It should. Government has been, you know, government has been said are not defeated. They and their actions defeat themselves, just like the gun registry did for the Liberals, 
leading to their 2006 defeat, I predict that Bill C-38 will become the turning point that leads to the ends of this Conservative government in 2015. Can any of the Conservatives across the way tell me how changing the access to EI helps Canada's unemployed? Can anyone across the way tell me that removing the Auditor General's examination of 12 agencies somehow helps Canadians? Can anyone tell me how forcing Canadians to work two years longer helps them? Can anyone across the way tell me how changing the environmental laws to reduce environmental assessments a hundredfold somehow helps Canadians? This Conservative government, with its reckless, excessive corporate tax cuts and the HST cut, has taken $30 billion a year out of the income of the federal government. I recall when I first started my working career, what was being said was a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. I lived my working career by that saying, and I still do. Because I believe in health care, because I believe in a good retirement security system that protects our seniors, because I believe we are responsible for those who cannot take care of themselves, I never once complained about paying my taxes. Oh, I have complained about how they were spent over the years. And yes, I support government accountability and transparency. The question remains to seen, if it be seen as if the Conservatives in this House still do. Mr. Speaker, how's my time? A half minutes remaining. Speaker. So I'll move now to a little bit of a summary. The Jobs, Growth and Long-Term Prosperity Act, that title. Well, Bill C-38 goes far beyond tax and monetary measures to make changes to dozens of policy areas, including the environment, natural resources and human resources. Excuse me, Mr. Speaker. We were clear in the Finance Committee, all of the opposition parties were clear, that we believed we should not have been asked to vote on a budget bill that grants Cabinet the power to make far-reaching regulatory changes as seen within Bill C-38. Bill C-38 has 400 plus pages, but I want everybody watching today at home to clearly understand that this is just the beginning. There will be yet another budget bill in the fall. So here's a few points, Mr. Speaker. First, there is a near total environmental overhaul in Bill C-38 that doesn't belong in a budget bill. The government wants a one-project, one-review environmental assessment system. So it is repealing the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act and replacing it with the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act of 2012. And I want to stress, it's reduced assessments a hundredfold. Mr. Speaker, that type of decision does not belong with a finance committee. The bill also sets out limits for completion of reviews, and the minister will have the power to shut down a review panel if he thinks it won't finish on time. What is on time? On time is when you give the proper study to protect the environment for our children and our grandchildren. How can anyone say that this belongs in a budget bill? This particular type of decision needs the due diligence supplied by a comprehensive review by experts and by the particular committee that's tasked with such a review. Not five minutes of questions at Finance Committee. Mr. Speaker, one day in Finance Committee when we were reviewing Bill C-38, we had witnesses, one that wanted to talk about it. Uh, genetically modified seeds, another one wanted to talk about the environment, another one wanted to talk about the fisheries, and it went on. We had seven people sitting there. Each one of them had a serious topic. We got to ask five questions, five minutes, sorry, five minutes of questions. Where do you even start with that comprehensive panel? We went through panel after panel with the same type of problems. Consider the EI definition for suitable work. That doesn't belong before the Finance Committee. Anybody here clearly knows that it should have gone before the Human Resources Committee. Now, C-38 removes definitions of suitable work from the Employment Insurance Act and gives the federal cabinet the power 
to create new regulations about what constitutes suitable work and reasonable efforts to work. The bill gives no details about what the new criteria will be. Mr. Speaker, how does the decision on removing the oversight of the Auditor General belong in a finance bill? After Bill C-38, the Auditor General will no longer, I repeat, no longer be required to annually audit several agencies, including Social Sciences, Humanities Research Council, the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, the Northern Pipeline Agency, and the Canadian Polar Commissions. These agencies must submit, submit annual financial reports to the Minister and say it. I said this committee, and I'll say it here again today, how does putting the fox in charge of the hen house create jobs and prosperity? Backlog immigration applications will be eliminated. Among the amendments to the Immigration Refugee Protection Act is a move to wipe out a backlog of 280,000 applications under the Skilled Worker Program. Skilled worker, Mr. Speaker. Skilled workers is what particularly Western Canada is screaming for. And that list is going to be wiped out. Applications made before 2008 will be deleted. Oh, they're gracious. They'll refund the fee. They've just taken away people's dreams. Dreams of coming to Canada and being a part of this great country and contributing to this great country. At the Finance Committee, we heard a very compelling intervention on these immigration changes from the member from Newton North Delta. She asked the committee to com consider, and I'll, I'll ask you to consider the same thing to the people here today. How do these changes, which will destroy the dreams of people who trust in Canada, somehow create jobs and prosperity? How in the world can you justify doing this within a budget bill with the claims that it will improve our prosperity? The Fishery Act changes contained in Bill C-38 do not belong at a finance committee. Where is our expertise at finance in dealing with the fisheries? It's very clear where that belongs. Bill C-38 shuts down several government-funded groups and agencies, including the National Council on Welfare, the Public Appointments Commission, Rights and Democracy, the National Roundtable on the Environment and the Economy, the Canadian Artists and Producers Professional Relations Tribunal, and Assisted Human Reproduction Canada. It creates a new Social Security Tribunal to hear appeals on decisions made by the Old Age Security, Employment Insurance, and other programs, and creates a Shared Services Canada Department. Mr. Speaker, how's my time? Okay. So, when you, when you stop to consider the breadth of what's happening here, if you really pause and look at the 400-plus pages, the 700 clauses, the areas of the bill that requires expertise in given areas that are not areas of responsibility of the Finance Committee, areas that clearly belong with human resources, clearly belong with immigration review, and clearly belong in other places. The fact of what has happened or is happening in this place is the removal of the trust the Canadians have given us, each one of us. We are all elected to come here for one purpose, to stand up and scrutinize the government, to work with the government, to, to provide the due diligence on governmental laws and legislation necessary to ensure that the changes that are being made are the best possible changes for the people. We hear members on the other side talk about working together, and in the same motion, Mr. Speaker, they turn around and they limit debate, or they come out with a bill like this. A bill like this that hand ties all members of Parliament to the place where they cannot do the due diligence that they're responsible to do. So I say here today, Mr. Speaker, I ask the members on the other side of this House to reconsider. Reconsider what you're doing. Stand up for the Canadians you claim to support and represent, and do your due diligence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.